going to sound strange to you. And I realize it probably never happens in your world. But in my world, I tend to come across all these different issues, these different problems, these different thoughts, these different statements that people make that I know the answer, but they seem to act like there's no answer, so they go and do what they want to do that seems right in their own eyes. For instance, how many times have you heard the church? Ta-da! And every time you hear the word the church, you know afterwards there's going to be some negative statement. And it's always going to be someone pointing a finger at someone else telling them what's wrong. You know, it would be nice to hear someone say, the church and what's right with the church. Don't you think? I mean, what is it? Are you ashamed of being a Christian that you have to attack what God has put into place for your benefit? Gee, where did that thought come from? Jesus had the same issue, it seems, with his disciples that we seem to have today. The church, whether you're in a congregation, a fellowship, a ministry, a association, a congregation, a denomination, whatever it may be, for some reason you get people in it that don't want to compliment. They want to convert it into controversy. Get the point? They don't want to compliment the church or say, wow, look at what good is happening. Man, it is so cool. God is good. God is great. Look at all these wonderful things we're doing. You know, I tell you, but I lose my benefits, you know, so I don't even want to talk about it because it's just so good. You wouldn't even believe it. And yet, Jesus said, by this shall you know my disciples indeed in that they have love for one another and to not do your works to be seen of men for those works that were done in secret would be made known openly and that people would recognize him and give thanks and glory to God to your Father in heaven so that all people would wonder what was going on and want to be a part of it. Yeah, let's go check it out. Ooh, cool, look at that. What's going on down the street? But whenever you get into the church, for some reason there is the mindset or the mindset of tearing down and not building up. It's funny because Jesus said, if you lifted me up, I would draw all men to you. But if you tear something down, somehow I don't see that happening as being loving your brethren. Hmm. You see, Jesus had the same problem in John, in the book of John, because, you know, you kind of read the book of John and you get this idea that John's kind of self-conceited because he's always saying, the disciple whom Jesus loved. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got it, John. How many times are you going to tell me? So you see, people still had their personalities, and there was probably a little friction between John and Peter, you know, because we see here in John 21, verse 21, 21, 21, that's pretty easy to remember, that Peter seeing him say to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? What are they doing? What is they doing? And Jesus saith unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to that? What is it? What is that to you? In other words, what are you really asking me? You follow me and you do what I tell you. Don't go looking around seeking other people to follow. Don't go looking around telling other people what to do. You follow me. I'd like to ask anyone and everyone that I can find on a regular basis as I'm going to kick off next Sunday what I call Sunday, Sunday schooling, maybe Sunday schooling, something like that for video. I want to ask you, I want to personally know directly from you, any of you who are quoting the church as being so bad and so wrong, and you've got this whole list of things that's wrong with the church. Can you tell me that Jesus told you to say that? Really? Can you come to me, as I will come to you right now here in this place, and say to me,
God spoke to me today and he told me I'm supposed to chastise the church. I'm supposed to point out it's false. I'm supposed to say what's wrong with the church. Because I have been given that gift. Really. Because I want to tell you what Jesus said to me. He said, shut up. Really. Seriously, I was in the bathroom. I was going to the bathroom and I was saying, you know, Lord, I'm so tired of these people going on about what's wrong with this and what's wrong with that. And he literally said, shut up. I went, a revelation. <laughs> no, he told me, be quiet, be still, come back to the place of peace, relax. I walk in the midst of the seven churches. Seven, not one. The church is not one, the church. It is made up of seven types. Now, you can kind of get into the little kind of playing games and find out what type of church you're in. Figure out what you ought to be doing. Or you could ask Jesus what he wants you to do. Because you see, in this scripture today that I just read to you, you're no longer without a responsibility to understanding what the word is saying. John 21, 21. You better go read it. Follow thou me. You see, when people say the church, they are trying to build themselves up and elevate themselves in a position of authority over God's authority who is higher. Now, no offense, I can look at this person who's lower and go, hey, you know what? If I put them underneath where God is, they have no authority, do they? So, Maybe for the church they're a part of, it all applies. Maybe when they're criticizing the church, they mean their church. Because the finger should be pointing at themselves as well as at you. Because if you're pointing a finger or you're wagging a tongue, then you're literally criticizing what God has done. God instigated, started, correlates, correlates, and puts in place the church. I don't care if you call it Catholic, Protestant, Lutheran, denominational, whatever. God is in control. Otherwise, are you a Christian? Do me a favor. Quit calling yourself a Christian if you don't have an active and living God, but you have a religious expression going on. Because I'd rather you just called yourself a Mormon or something, you know, with a dead God or maybe a Jehovah's Witness with an inactive God or some other cult-like imitation of Christianity as opposed to an active living Jesus alive and well living in me and you. Because until I see that, until I hear the words that I know Jesus is speaking, I want to know who gave you authority over God's church? Who put you in charge of His seven churches that he walks in the midst of. When did Jesus abdicate his authority and say, I'm not going to walk in the midst of the seven churches anymore. I want you to take over for me because you can see better than I can. You know better than I do. You are, after all, Lord of the churches. Or are you? Wasn't there a scripture that says something about the master of the vineyard went out and hired servants. And he hired some in the morning, and some at noon, and some at night. And to each one, he gave a responsibility to do. And he paid them a penny. And they that came at noon, he paid a penny. And they that came at night, he paid a penny. That way, all received the same wages. What kind of servant are you? Are you criticizing the vineyard you work in? Are you complaining about your wages, that you aren't prosperous enough, that you haven't received enough, that you haven't gotten enough? Are you trying to make a name for yourself, that you want to be, oh, a mega pastor, oh, a mega ministry, I want the ministry in my name, not the glory to go to his fame, but I want my fortune to proclaim who I am. I like to say to people, you know, and I, I don't do it anymore on the internet because I'm responsible to this ministry that God has given me and he really puts me in place because he challenges me and says, Michael, you can't think like that, but I, I want to say to people that, you know, criticize the church in any way, shape or form and I say, 
How dare you? You're talking about my my home. You're talking about my place. You're talking about my people. You want to talk to me? Come on, get on the phone. We're going to rap. Because, you see, when you're messing with my posse, I'm going to put God on you. I'm going to sick his Holy Spirit on you. I'm going to put all the angels in heaven and the hosts on your case. Because you're going against my people. And you don't mess with my people. You beginning to get the picture here? You beginning to understand where you're off the wall if you're attacking the church? I don't care who you are. You are called follow thou me. You see, if you're following a religion, oh sure, then you've got all these rules and regulations and votes and councils and laws and freedom of rights and rights and privileges to vote on all these different little kind of democracy things you get to play with to act like you're God of your own little religion. Ooh, but if you're following now me, uh, no. Because you see, if you're following Jesus, I am following Jesus, and I can ask you every day, did you ask Jesus today? Did Jesus tell you to do what, what I think you're kind of I'm listening, but it just isn't sinking in my ears too well because it sounds pretty yeah to me. But did Jesus tell you to do that? Did he say to you specifically today, I want you to be bitter. I want you to beckon people to tear down the church. I want you to chastise it because it's lukewarm. I want you to go and tell them my words so that you will add something to it or you won't add to it okay good then just say what Jesus said blessed are they which overcome because you see even in the lukewarm church Jesus offered hope I hear today when people talk about the church they don't offer hope as a matter of fact most of the time when I hear people talk about the church man they ain't offering no hope at all as a matter of fact, they got something bad to say, they got something to tell you to do, and they got something they keep saying they want you to do, but they don't do themselves. As a matter of fact, if they went out and started a church, nobody'd go to it. They just want to tear someone else down. Is that what you really want to be a part of? It may feel good. Don't get me wrong. Rap music sounds good when you're just tearing about down, tearing down, and you just think everything's all negative, but guess what? After about 20 years of rap music, when your children start to grow up and they start rapping against you and saying just how much of a whatever word you want to put in for rap music at the time, bebop music, about how negative it was, then I think you see the consequences of what you did to your children and you don't want them to be like that, do you? Because it may have gave you freedom of expression. But what you expressed may not have been the best to bless your children. Because they came back on you and said, you're the problem. You see how that works? Once you start pointing fingers, the finger comes back to point at you. You reap what you sow. Jesus doesn't want you to suffer the consequences of your actions. He doesn't want you to go that road and find out to dead end. He wants you to understand you follow him. Because if you don't, you're going to get like the world is. Criticizing, critical, a critical spirit, a lying spirit, a chastising spirit, making up things about things you don't know, acting as though you're high and mighty when you're lowly and needing of mercy and grace. And where will you go? To the church you criticize? Because you see, when you set yourself up as a judge of your own religion, God may turn your heart over to that religion and you may find you don't like it at all. As a matter of fact, when you need mercy and grace, when you need to find forgiveness and kindness and gentleness, when you've been stomped on and beat up, I don't think you're going to go to the church that's criticizing. I think you're going to go to the church that's loving. So you need to get a handle on this idea of your finger, where it's pointing. It shouldn't be sideways shouldn't be pointing anywhere around. It should be pointing straight up. And that's what we knew about in the Jesus movement. We never pointed fingers at other people. 
We didn't say, look, you Jehovah's Witness, or you, you Mormon, or look, you this, look, you that. We were told, follow thou me, and we were told to look up, for our salvation draweth nigh. Today, as you hear his voice, and you consider the church you're in, and better be in one, then look up, for your salvation draws nigh. But when you get ready to start pointing fingers, just like holding a gun, you need to know what you're doing. Because you pull that trigger, and that bullet, once it leaves the chamber, is your responsibility. You're accountable for that bullet, and that death if it caused one, and that life if you terminated it. You, no one else, you alone are accountable for that action. The same thing is true with the words that you speak, the fingers that you point, the wagging of the tongue. Dare you criticize what God has not put you in charge of? Or dare you choose to bless and not curse, to encourage and not discourage, to lift up the name of Jesus and love the brethren, as we are, frankly, commanded in just about every single scripture I could find. Now maybe, just maybe, you have this down better than I do. Maybe you can find some place where Jesus has told you to go do what you're doing in criticizing His body, His church, His place where He chooses to meet with people. And if you can find it, email me. I'll eat you alive. I'll take you down for supper, lunch, and dinner. And I'll chew you up. Yeah. Because you see, I have my hermeneutic down. I have my homiletic. That's no problem. Logic is simple. People are stupid, <laughs> put it bluntly, because they choose to argue stupid things. And they always show where they failed in their own logic by extending God into the equation. Because you see, if God wants to make a point, he makes the wise the foolish. And he makes the foolish the wise. And whenever I choose to take a stand, <laughs> I make sure who I'm standing with, Jesus. So that when I have to be put on the spot, I know what I'm standing on. Because I didn't stick my neck out unless God told me so. And so you see, the difference between the person pointing the finger and the person right now who's speaking is that God told me to come and share. I dare any of you to tell me that God told you to go out and chastise his body, to go out and to criticize his church. I dare you. And we shouldn't be daring each other, but I do. I'm fleshy. Because, hey, I know who's got my back on this one. It's not just the Word of God. It's the living Word. As He is revealed in me, as He has chosen for me to speak today about what He wants to do with this Sunday schools that we're going to do, or Sunday schooling. Probably call it that, Sunday schooling. Because I never went to Sunday school, so I taught it, but I never went to it. So I'm going to call it Sunday schooling. 101. <laughs> that sounds good. And we're going to look at some of the little bitty sins that seem to easily beset us and trip up people so that we would no longer be just going to Sundays in order to get a little quick fix and run down the road, but we begin to understand that there's a schooling on Sunday, that God is not fooling anyone with what he's saying, but he's choosing to reveal himself in how we live our lives, how we deal with even our own church. Because if you're criticizing your own church, don't get out. You're not doing anybody any favors. If God has told you to be there, be a part of building it, not tearing it down.